What's up guys, this is Sora with a new episode of Absolute Beginner Tutorials for Unreal Engine 4. In this video, we will go through the basics of collision detection. We will do this by creating the enemy behavior for a game, which we discussed in the first episode of the series. Our goal is to create an enemy which goes up and down, and then if the player touches the enemy, we send back to the beginning of the game. So the challenge for the player is to time this right and get past the enemy. So how do we do this? We have already done the movement of the enemy in the previous episode. So if you have if you're curious how we did that, you can go back and watch that. However, this time we'll focus on the um, interaction of the enemy and the player. So, here is my solution on how to do this. First, we'll store the starting location of the player in a vector variable. And then, in the enemy, we'll detect the collision of the enemy with the player. And we'll send the player back to the starting location. Since I'm going to focus on the collision detection mostly in this video, we'll start with the second part first. So go ahead and go back to the engine and open up the enemy blueprint that we created in the previous videos. If you have not watched the previous videos, just create a new blueprint and choose the type pawn for it and open it. So, I'm going to delete the things that I've already created so we can start over again. So, go ahead and select the. Um, if you go to the viewport, you will see that I've added a static mesh. So, if you're missing that, add a static mesh to the blueprint and then select the static mesh in the component section. If you look at the detail section and scroll down a bit, you will see a section called collision. So every object that can collide in Unreal Engine 4 gets an object type and a series of responses. And these define how it interacts with the other objects in the game. And this is very important because this forms the basics of collision detection in Unreal Engine 4. When objects collide together, basically two types of events can be triggered. Hit events and overlap events. We will focus on the overlap events in this video. So, there are, if you go back to the event graph, and right click while the static mesh is highlighted you see at event for whatever the mesh is called and then under that you see collision you will see that there is add on component begin overlap which is basically the event that will be triggered when the component is overlapping with something when the overlap starts and then you have a similar event but for the ending of the overlap. This will be triggered when overlap ends. So how do we set this up? How do we set up overlap events? First thing that you have to keep in mind is that you need a primitive component in your blueprint in order for this to work. Primitive components are basically components that contain some kind of geometry. There are several subclasses, but the most common ones are static meshes, like the one that we, we have here, so this one can collide. We can also use skeletal meshes, which I'll not go into right now. Another thing we can use is uh, collision components. 
so there are three types I think there is a capsule there is a box and there is a sphere and the difference between these is that the collision components will not be rendered uh, so they will be invisible but the static mesh as you can see here in the viewport you can see it in this case we will use a box component for the collision detection so go ahead and click on add component under components just write in box and you will see box collision so add that and just move it around till you're happy with the location um, I will make this a little bigger just to make sure that player um, yeah I think we're good you can fine-tune it for your own game if you want to so the next step after we have added the primitive um, uh, component that you like is to make sure that the object responses are right in this case we don't need to do it it's set correctly from the beginning however since I'm trying to teach you this I'll go through them quickly so select the box and go to the um, collision section in the details panel so first thing that you need to check always if you want to have overlap events to make sure that generate overlap events is ticked the second thing is to check that collision is enabled as you can see it says query only and that's fine for this time uh, for our purpose you can see also the object type which is word world dynamic you can choose if you click on it you see there's different types world static dynamic pawn vehicle destructible but this is fine for us for now and then you see the collision responses there are basically three different responses ignore which basically ignores the there will be no collision overlap which is kind of similar to ignore as they will not physically they can go through each other the but um, there will be overlap events generated and then you have blocking which is basically as the as you can guess from the name the objects cannot go through each other but the both the hit events and overlap events will be generated so you can go ahead as an exercise and check these um, for your player character as well but as I said they are already automatically set so we don't need to change them in this case now that we have checked the um, collision responses next thing is to set up the events that will be triggered when the overlap happens between the player and the enemy so go ahead and click on the event graph and while the box is selected right click and right click uh, and then left click on add event for box collision and then click on add and component begin overlap so this is the event that we want however we must tell it which actor it should be overlapping with in order to trigger the event you can see there are several output pins here we'll use the other actor pin which is basically the other actor that is involved in the collision or in the overlap in this case we will use something called a casting knot so draw draw out a um, wire and write cast to side scroller character which is basically our, the name of our player character so 
I will not explain this knob in detail as it is it will require its own video or maybe several videos and it's not basic it's not really a basic subject so we'll we'll probably look at this later but it is enough for you to know that you can use this when you are trying to identify specific actors involved in events it also is very very useful since it lets you access communicate with those actors so from this output pin that you see here you can basically communicate with the player so now that we have done this uh, the next thing is to set the player's location when the collision has, has happened so write set actor location and you get this one so you see a lot of pins here but the important ones is the target which is uh, which will be the player so just uh, connect the output pin to the target and then you ha you need the location which we have not set up first so uh, set up yet so now click on compile close this and go to the player blueprint so here first um, we need to of course set the get the starting location so write get actor location and just click on that target is self is fine the output pin is basically the location of this actor of the target so draw out a pin and click on promote variable you can change the name to player start I had this uh, beforehand so I need to delete it first so player start and then the event that we need is the um, beginning of the game basically the event that will be triggered in the beginning and that's called begin just write begin play event begin play and connect that to this so go back to your enemy blueprint and the last step is to give the starting location to the from the player to the enemy blueprint and as I said the casting node is very useful in this case so draw out a wire from the output pin from the casting node and write player start and you can see that the variable comes up here so click on get player start and now you're good connect that to the set actor location input pin for location so that's basically it so go ahead and try that and see how it works for you that's it for this time guys thank you very much for watching and like the video and subscribe for more videos also please leave any comments or if you have any questions anything that you you want to know how to do just um, leave it in the comments and I will definitely definitely read them so yep see you guys next time